question. No, you know you're telling me I'm still in... What is my tone? tone? Listen, you're not the only one with problems here, OK? I'm not a mind reader. Women... However, I was a miserable, miserable, miserable academic failure. Take that, you fucking bastard, and that book! I was totally unprepared. A whole week was taken up with putting our past and future lives behind us. I wasn't by any means alone. A lot of my mates have been told their futures were a non-starter. We didn't know it then, of course, but we had been brainwashed by our parents and teachers who had, in turn, been brainwashed by theirs into a straitjacket of worthlessness. If you're failed because you can't spell or read and write in the normal accepted sense, your self-esteem, you are, you are in the current environment, it, it's getting better, but for the most part, you're considered to be a failure. So what is hard to deal with is that the, uh, is your, what I find very hard to deal with is my self-esteem. By now, I, I found the whole idea of being among lucid people alarming to say the least. I tried to avoid anyone who might show up my total inaptitude for anything remotely academic. You infantile! I always uh, depart from the uh, point of view that uh, failure is not genetic. There is no gene uh, for failure. And therefore, my point of departure is always that uh, failure is uh, structural in nature. Now, by structural in nature, I, means that, I mean that uh, um, failure is constructed. Failure is created and therefore somebody is responsible for this failure. Now we have a culture, we have a tradition where we tend to blame uh, the victim. The child is the problem, his or her family is the problem, a so-called dysfunctional uh, community is the problem. From my point of view, that is completely erratic and erroneous. Uh, from my point of view, therefore, failure is structure. And therefore, to understand failure, we have to look into ourselves, into our system. We as teachers, we as curriculum developers, we as educational administrators, we as people who are in somehow, in some way or another, you know, involved in the education system. Cut through me like a bolt of lightning, splitting a desolate tree in a wild storm. while we toil in some stinking factory. So what's the future, lads, for us? Where were the stars when we were born that ordained our births and deaths should be stomped out like jelly babies in a jar, to be sucked out and chewed, then spit out at the end to croak away before a flickering light? Because I remember him walking around the house saying, I've got all these words in my head, I've got these stories, it drives me crazy, I've got to get them out of my head, and pacing, you know, and being so frustrated. And then eventually, Eureka, he found voice dictation, and suddenly all these things he'd been talking about, and the stories I'd been hearing, and what he'd been pacing around with, suddenly started to emerge as words on the computer. Chaos! And chaos and confusion, chaos and confusion, chaos and confusion! <laughs> <laughs> Being patient is actually something that allows one to develop further, to evolve more as a human being. So I would say that the human qualities are much more enhanced when you have a variety and the diversity of people that you are living with, working with, being with. I came to see schooling as a complete and utter total waste of time. <laughs> A 
accompanied by university constables known to us as bulldogs. Dyslexia and self-esteem is an issue which needs to be explored more in depth and needs to be given some, you know, some more importance. Because most of us speak about dyslexia and learning how to read and write and we forget the impact that our experiences put on us um, because our self-esteem gets affected by the way people deal with us. The problem is not whether I have dyslexia or not, it's, the problem is what? What is done about it? The brochure of our lives told us with colourful clarity that they were over before they started. Creating an environment where the child feels that he's safe, safe to make mistakes. People with dyslexia want to be listened to, want to be understood. They've had too many people telling them what to do, telling them what is right for them. And this has created a lot of anger. Um, and some people find it very hard to deal with. So I think the first thing is to understand the lived experience, not to try to interpret it, but to listen well to it and to see what it all means. Without the pub, including his relations, running after him from my past.